So I've set up a little instance here and we're gonna walk through a use case. Um, right, oh, so what is the use case? You probably wanna know that. Uh, so we have on this machine here, a GitLab instance. Uh, it's GitLab running on AWS in a Docker container and it is running, uh, it's exposed on this private address here, if you can see that. And this is actually the VPC address. So what we wanna do is provide access to this GitLab instance running in AWS. So pretty common remote access type of use case, but kind of combining that with the idea of like a cloud use case. So let's walk through quickly how we can do that with NetMaker. Um, let me just go back to the page here. Uh, oh, so we have it running at this public address. Well, the instance is at this public address, but just to confirm, it's not reachable there. Um, the access is not allowed and it will be reachable at this private address, but we actually can't reach that either. So not gonna work too well. Um, so let's use NetMaker to go ahead and do that. And where did my instance go? There we go. So this is the SaaS platform. Uh, I just signed in and I have my instance running here. Uh, when you first sign up, you'll see a network was pre-created for you. It'll be empty, unlike mine, but it'll be called NetMaker. And there will also be an access cre key created for you. So that's basically how it gets you set up. And then you go to this landing page and it has actually a tutorial over here that you can use as well to learn. So actually, I'm going to encourage you all to look at this if you want to learn more about both our new UI and just how to use NetMaker in general. Uh, it's a very long tutorial, I'll say, but it goes through the whole platform. You can go through all the different concepts um, from networks to enrollment keys to hosts to nodes, uh, egress, ingress, relay, metrics, really everything uh, you can imagine. And it tries to do it very concisely. So if you're really looking to do a deep dive, I would say this is the way to do it. We'll work on putting up a shorter, maybe five minute version of this as well. Um, but yeah, so here we are on our instance and you can actually see here, we've already got some instances running. Uh, we have a few VMs. We have one in AWS. We have one actually in DigitalOcean in New York and we have one in DigitalOcean in Singapore. And they have all their private addresses set up and you can see them on this nice little graph. They're peer-to-peer -peer access to each other. So this is our little basic network. And what we want to do is add our host into this network, and we want to make it able to reach that machine on AWS. Now, worth noting, this machine on AWS is not the one running GitLab. Uh, this is a different device. So we're going to use this device as a gateway to reach that other device on AWS. And we could just put the client on that device running GitLab, but this is a more fun way to show you how you can provide access to a whole VPC or subnet using one of your devices. Uh, so we'll show that in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and add my machine into this network. So I'm going to add a new host and that's gonna bring us to the registration page. It's gonna allow us to select an enrollment key. We then select our platform and it gives us a nice little command to install the client. So on my local, I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And that's gonna take a little bit just to download that and install. But yeah, basically while it's running, you get all these nice little um, ways to download and install on all your devices, including Docker, which is a very nice one to have, um, especially if you're you know, used to doing a lot of these DevOps type things. But uh, we have access across a wide variety of device types. And we'll talk a little bit about how to get the ones that maybe aren't as well supported. Okay, so our client is installed and now we want it to join the network. So, oops, gotta choose my device type. We've got a command here to do that. And there we go. And that's pretty much it to get into a network. We should see it show up momentarily inside of our host page. And there we go. This is my local device. Uh, we can see it's now got an address there. And if we look here, it's got handshakes with everything in the network. Uh, everything appears to be reachable. Yep, looks good. So we're good to continue here. So if we take a look now at our network layout, we should see one more device. So now we've got four. 
And now we want to access that VPC. So let's go back to our egress page. Our egress feature enables us to turn a device into a sort of router to reach a subnet or multiple subnets. So looking back at this host, we see it's got access to the VPC subnet. So we can go back here, create an egress out of it. So this is our AWS device. Um, there's a lot more powerful features there we're not gonna talk about right now. We'll set it up to reach the whole subnet and then create. And that is pretty much it. So going back over to AWS, we saw that this is the private address. Let's see now if we can reach it. Hey, there we are. So as if I'm on the local network or the VPC from my laptop, I'm able to sign into this private GitLab. Hey, there we go. Now I'm able to get in. Uh, so I'm going to show one other nice little feature here. Uh, you might not want to access this over just a, you know, IP address. So what if I want to use private DNS to do that? Well, luckily here, I've got some DNS management. So I'm going to go ahead and say gitlab.netmaker. And here's our address to alias. So I create my DNS entry. And now let's give that a go. gitlab.netmaker. Whoops. Probably doesn't like that post fix very much, but there we go. We're now accessing, accessing it over the private DNS. Perfect. Um, okay. Oh, and we got a great question in the chat, which is, can you create an egress on external clients? So perfect timing to get that question. We're going to talk about that right now. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with external clients, this is the way that we provide access to devices that are maybe a little harder to integrate. So stuff that can't run the clients so easily. Um, in this case, you're running your own WireGuard config file. So what I'm going to do is create a client with a client gateway. And I'm going to answer that question at the same time. So here we go to our client gateway. We select a host. So I'm going to make uh, this DigitalOcean droplet. This is going to be my gateway. So unlike egress, which brings traffic out of the network, this is going to bring traffic into the network. And we can do some features like setting the client ID. Now here is a more advanced setting. Uh, you could provide your own public key to make it more secure. Uh, you could also add additional IP addresses to that machine. So this is how you can do it with an external client. What I'm going to do here is just add this extra address to my external client and add it to the network. Um, so I'm creating this. I now have the client here. And it has that extra set of allowed IPs uh, on the client. And what that lets me do is I can take this client and I can download it. And you can run that on the device that you want to act as an egress gateway. Now, because this is just a simple config file, it doesn't have our advanced client features, you have to set up the routing yourself. So typically, this is some simple IP tables rules or NF tables. Um, or if you're running on some router operating system, it might have some other stuff. But basically, you set up the routing rules to forward traffic into that network on the device. And then, yeah, that device is now able to route traffic for your NetMaker network. So that's a very powerful feature. And I'm glad you asked that question. Um, but yeah, that's basically the beauty of uh, the external client. It provides integrations for different types of devices. And you know you can integrate stuff like iPhones. So if you're on the road and you want to connect to the network, you create a client and you could scan this QR code from your phone. Uh, you'll use the WireGuard app and that'll be how you access the network. So yeah, that is pretty much it with the clients uh, and with egress. I went through that much faster than I thought I would, um, but you can see our graph here now. Uh, the layout's a little funky, but you can kind of see, so we've got these two clients, they connect via New York one. So that's how they route their traffic is in through this guy. Uh, the rest of these guys are in a peer to peer network. And then over here, we've got the, um, egress gateway, the subnet range that we're routing to. Um, yeah, I guess one other thing I can show, let me just do this, uh, is access controls. So controlling access to a network. 
So let's say I don't want my local device to be able to reach GitLab for whatever reason. I can just cut off that access right here. And that should be enough to cut it off. So let's see if that did it. Okay, can't be reached now. That's unfortunate, but luckily we should be able to just bring it back. So if we submit that, then refresh, might take a minute, see how fast it goes. Pretty good. Yeah, now we have access again. So click of a button, you turn on and off access. Um, and it can also get a lot more advanced than this. So for instance, you want to do something more like zero trust, make everything disconnected in your whole network, and then you define which things can connect. So maybe it's just these two that can connect and nothing else. Um, and you can set up networks to do that by default, but that's a more uh, advanced change, I'd say. So that's really it for our demo. We went over the graph, we went over access controls, uh, egress, clients, hosts in a pretty short time frame. but I just wanted to show, hey, how do you set this up real quickly? So thanks again, everyone for joining. And yeah, feel free to share this. Uh, I'll be sharing out a video as well. Yeah, but other than that, thanks again.